Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to High Desert Bible Church. Podcast for a midweek, so to speak. Trust that everything's going pretty good for you. You know, our heart's desire is that these messages uh, will reach somebody that just doesn't know Jesus Christ. And so we select topics that uh, are relevant, that are applicable to your lives, and I, and I hope that, uh, that that stands out, that that becomes a reality for you. And if you like it, please like it and pass it along. It'll help us out, and we'll know exactly what kind of uh, uh, topics that you uh, favor more than others, so to speak. So <clears throat> I think it would be safe to say that we are living in a very untrusting world. We live in a world from a Christian perspective that's in a, a fallen world. And the fall came way back in Genesis 3 when man decided that he knew better than what God had for his life and he chose to follow a decision that would cost him dearly. And so uh, it's still costing mankind dearly. And so when we think about living in a fallen world or trying to live in an untrusting world, what are we saying? Well, depending on how old you are, you, you may think that the world is normal. You, you may think nothing of the fact that people actually straight-faced lie, and in that lie, as we've talked on this show before, uh, a lie is a deception. And you can call it a lie. You can say that you want to embellish or stretch it. You can say it's a false truth. You can say everything that makes the conscience feel better about it. But at the end of the day, it's a lie. It's a form of deception. And so when I listen to people, for example, at least here in the States, um, when I see a politician stand in front of a border wall that he adamantly is against and tells people that he's for it and that he wants to secure our border all the while when he has no intention of securing the border, he becomes an untrustworthy individual because he's not saying exactly what he means. He's saying what you want to hear, but he's not saying what he means from his heart. And whether that's in politics, leadership, in the workplace, in family units, in friendship circles, in team sports, uh, it's always best to be able to trust the person uh, either that you're being raised by or you, you're living with if you're in a college dorm or that a friendship, you've, you've, you've uh, etched out a friendship. And so friendships is based on whether a person's sound to their word. Let your yes be yes and no be no, as was an old saying. Um, if you want to, you do. And if you don't, you don't. But you don't vacillate in between. And so when we talk about trusting, trusting is deeper than agreements. To trust somebody in a military position, oftentimes fellows had to trust the guy next to him, so to speak, uh, or I got your six was an expression that somebody was protecting your backside. Or when people say, I have your back, it's a, it's a, a gesture that means I, I'm standing behind, I'm going to protect, I believe in what you say. Well, it's like this story of the little boy that cries wolf. You can only cry wolf so many times, right? I used that analogy before, but it's true. You call wolf wolf when there is no wolf, and people come to your rescue pretty soon. They're going to determine that you're not a person of your word, and when you cry wolf wolf, they're just going to leave you to it. And then in the case that there is a wolf, what are you going to do? And so as we're talking about this topic, living in a untrusting world, how does that play out in your life? Not only can you not trust the things that people are saying, uh, you can't trust the fact of, and let's say you're a, a middle-aged person. Let's say you have a, you've just gotten married maybe, and let's just say you, you're now thinking about starting a family and you got this job. Is, is the employment, can you trust it? Is it going to take you to a career? Are you going to stay there? Are you going to jump ship? Are you going to flip-flop like a lot of people do? Are you going to be content, discontent? 
Are you going to be able to trust that organization that says, I'm going to take care of you, or I'm going to pay into your retirement plan, or I'm going to do the things I say I'm going to do for you? They are basically telling you that they, you need to put all your trust in them because they're going to tell you the truth. Well, I can tell you the older that you get, things change. People may have great intentions, but that doesn't mean that they're trustworthy. As things occur and changes happen, people succumb to temptations, people succumb to people's feelings and thoughts, and and next thing you know, they break their word, and then the next thing you know, it costs somebody more than they're willing to pay, and then pretty soon, you're no longer trustworthy. It's like a person that says, I'm going to show up every day at 630 Well, for a week he shows up at 6.30, but then it becomes 6.40, and then 6.45, and then 5 to 7, and then 7, and then 7.15, 7.30. And then the excuses come out, because it's no longer important to that person to be a person of integrity and hold to something that you can trust in. So, I personally quit trusting in the world a long time ago, because I understood that it's fallen. I understood that it has... Too many cracks in it. There's too many people with their fingers in the derricks trying to hold everything together to uphold somebody else's trust while all the while behind the scenes uh, they're maneuvering and doing things that just aren't trustworthy. Uh, You may be living in in our country today and over the last several years you may have found that the cost of everything is outrageous. The cost of energy is outrageous. Uh, The cost to transport is outrageous. Uh, And a lot of things have been purposely done to erode the American lifestyle. They know that's a fact. It's just not me sitting here saying it. Uh, There's foreign entities that are purchasing up our lands. There are foreign entities that are supplying our, our food lines with inferior products. So there's a lot of things going on uh, that are making people open their eyes to the fact that there are certain things that you no longer can trust in. It's not going to be there. If you go to the grocery store, you'll note that some things that you've always uh, counted on being there are no longer there because the supply chains are broken. Supply chains are broken because some administrator didn't do his job or her job or somebody failed this way or that way. And so what do you trust in? Who is trustworthy in your life? You say, oh, my mom's trustworthy. Yeah, moms usually typically are okay for some people. Not everyone, not every mom's trustworthy. That's for sure. Uh, Not every dad has proven himself to be trustworthy. Okay? And so family, though, typically should be trustworthy. A close associate, a close friend. But these are all human relationships. Now I want to read you a scripture that I find very intriguing very intriguing and it's true it's an absolute truth and it's in Psalms 56 11 and in Psalms 56 11 it says something to this degree that I have put my trust in God what can man do to me what was the psalmist saying What is the psalmist saying to us? That I will not be afraid of what man can do to me because I put my trust in a living God. Now, for this particular cast, I'm not going to worry about whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. I'm going to tell you that I do. He has proven himself to be trustworthy in my life more times than I can shake a stick at. My family has never suffered food. My family has never been without. We have been uh, literally around the world, and he has always stood in the gap for us. He's proven himself. The Bible itself proves as a proof text that God is faithful, reliable, and trustworthy. Now, he also says something very interesting in Jeremiah 17. He says that there is a curse, so to speak, on people when they trust in themselves, and they make their self the point of their trust. So I guess the question would be, do you trust yourself more than you trust God? Do you trust yourself 
with how you live? Do you trust yourself with, with who you're going to meet? Do you trust yourself with your job, your abilities, etc.? And then what if I told you that it was God that gave you the mind to think and the hands to work? That you're not your own. You're not even purchased. Jesus Christ purchased your life when he shed his blood on the cross of, of Calvary. And so if God is the best to trust, then why wouldn't we trust all of our affairs, our life? And why would we be afraid of what mankind can say or do or what they don't do or don't say? Do those things matter? Should they matter? Should they make you as a person? Should they establish you as a person on a foundation? Or should your foundation be in learning what faith is about and placing your faith in the living God that manifested himself in Jesus Christ and showed you his faithfulness by doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And what did he say he was going to do? That he was going to send his son and that he was going to give his son a body through the virgin birth. And through that birth and through that life, that life was always headed to the cross. That God's remedy for sin would be paid forward in the sun before, before the foundations of the earth. And that he appeared at the right time, it says in Hebrews. And that Jesus Christ lived his life to give us an example that he trusted in God for his own life as a human in this, in the, when he was here. To the point of laying his life down for your life and my life. He was able to take his life up again, and he resurrected from the dead. He trusted God with his life. God proved to be trustworthy. As an example, I've read it for many, many years. I've lived it for many, many years. Not perfectly. I stumble. And typically, when I've stumbled, I've trusted in me and not in him. I thought I knew better. I thought the way I was thinking about things was better. I thought this particular relationship was going to work better, or this work endeavor was going to work better. And then I said, so what did I do? Ah, God, I don't need you right here in this one. Go ahead and take a side seat for a minute. I'm going to trust me. I'm going to do what I think is right. I'm going to trust in everything that I know to be right. I'm not going to trust in you with all that I am and all that I need to do because I think I got this. And inevitably, you know, each time in my life that I've done that, I've fallen desperately short. And then by his grace, he receives me again, and I stand back and I keep walking again. And so over the course of time and age you begin to realize that there's no point in holding back. There's no point. You're missing out by holding back. You're missing out on all that God has for us by you holding back and trusting him. There's moments in time, folks, there's moments in time that you are required to trust God beyond your own ability to trust in yourself and the way you think. And in that moment of time, you can make or break the moment. That doesn't suggest that God doesn't love you any more or any less. He loves you with an everlasting love. It just means that we miss the opportunity that we were given at that moment and no telling where we would be from that point forward. So trust is one of those interesting things. It's an ongoing aspect of life, isn't it? Yeah. Do you trust that your heart's going to beat all night? Do you trust that you're going to wake up in the morning? Well, if you're trusting in yourself to wake yourself up, that's pretty naive. You say, why? Well, Scripture says that God Almighty holds your life in the palm of his hands. He says you are but a vapor, a breath that passes away. His breath is in the palm of his hands. Everything about our lives he sees clear. And matter of fact, Psalms 139 says that there is a given day when your life's going to be over and you can't add to it or subtract from it. The day, the hour, the minute, the second, when it's up, it's up. You're gone. What's going to happen? Are you trusting 
God for eternity or are you trusting yourself for eternity? Are you going to be so intimidated over mankind that you're going to trust them because they're going to intimidate you and you're going to yield and you're going to bow because you're afraid to stand firm? Or are you going to stand firm before the Lord Jesus Christ, God incarnate, and live your life the way that he's called you to live and that each succession every day your trust grows, your faith grows, the endurance grows, your willingness to let go of you more grows. Until what? Until your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ has presented in you the image of himself. And that the mind of Christ comes upon us and that we no longer think the way we used to think, but rather we think towards the living God rather than opposing the living God. What will it take you to trust? You may be saying, well, you've got to prove it to me. I've got to see it. You may never see it. Do you have to see to believe? Or can you believe without seeing? Jesus himself said, greater are those who will believe without seeing rather than those that have to believe by seeing. Oh, well, there's a lot of Christians in this world that have to experience, touch, understand it, reason it. They got to be in charge of it or they don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe that. So they question God's word. They don't trust that God wrote the Bible. They trust that man has something to do with the Bible, and therefore their hope is what? what? Not in God's promises, but in man's re ability to tell them what the Word says. I, I don't want you to do that. I want you to read for yourself. I want you to understand Jeremiah 17 when he says that it's a curse when you trust in yourself. And there's a blessing when you trust in God and when your trust is God. See, it's more than trusting God. Is the absolute essence of our trust God? That he's able? That he's able to fulfill his promises for my life and your life? I'm telling you that God is faithful. I'm telling you that when David wrote, in God have I put my trust, that was a warrior king that was in the battlefield all the time. Can you imagine the arrows flying? Can you imagine the swords clashing? Can you imagine the spears whizzing by? Can you imagine what's going on in the battlefield? And he trusted himself unto the Lord? But what can man do to me? I tell you what, you live your life that way? What can man do to me? I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going forward. There's nothing man can do to you. I pray today that we all arrive at that place of trusting in the Lord more than we trust in ourselves, in the way we think, and the way we reason it out. I pray that we all lay down the rights to ourselves and that we trust Him more and more each day. And that His will becomes so evident to us because we gain the knowledge of God by our pursuit of God. And when you pursue God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, what happens? He lets you find Him. He's trustworthy. He's trustable. He doesn't break his promises. Yea, yes, no, wait. Sure. But he won't break his promise. Never late, never early, right on time. The Lord Jesus. Put your faith and your trust in what he did on the cross for your life. And he'll get you home into eternity. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sit here and share. We pray, God, that trust becomes more important to us, just as uh, Jeremiah 17, 5 to 10 says. Just like the psalmist that said, in God have I put my trust. I I've, I've, I've put all that I am in him. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. I will not be afraid of what the world is going to do. The world is an untrusting place filled with fallen people that are telling lies and deceiving but you wrote that in the Word and told us that that's what would happen. Father, rather, we're waiting for you. We trust in your Word that said you will not leave us as orphans. Ephesians 1.5, that you called us to be sons of God. And that's that preeminent stand in that first century where the firstborn son, the son, was an heir. It doesn't negate females. Just in that text, it was talking to the male that they're sons of God because of faith in Jesus Christ. 
you have to trust that too. You have to trust that the word is right. You have to trust that your sins are forgiven. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I trust the Lord to be who he says he is. And he wrote it out on paper and he contained it in the book called the Bible and he gave it to me. So, Father, thank you and praise you for all that you do. Thank you for allowing us to trust in your word. Thank you for allowing us to trust Jesus Christ with our souls. We ask now, Lord, as we bow before you, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, O Lord. We ask for the things that we put towards you, whether it's lack of trust, whether it's angers and bitternesses and all the things of the flesh that we seem to, that comes out of us because we're just trusting in us more than we're trusting in you to change our hearts. You say in your word in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any person be in Christ, they're a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away and the new has come. Gracious Father, I pray for those that are listening, that even if one bows the knee before you and says, Lord, I haven't trusted you. I want to trust you with my soul and my life. I'm going to surrender and I'm going to ask you to come live in my life and my heart. I'm going to ask you to make me born again and I'm going to ask you to change the way I think. And I'm going to ask you to guide and direct me into the Bible. Get me one. Let me have one. Let me start reading it. Let me fellowship. Let me change the way I'm living. Tired of trusting in my ways. I want to trust in your ways. So, Father, thank you for that prayer. I pray that they prayed it. If you did say a little prayer like that, it's a prayer of faith. Put it down on a comment. Let us read a few of those things. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time, all right? Blessings.